story begins at the death of Charles Taze Russell on October 31, 1916, and the election of Joseph Franklin Rutherford on January 6, the following year. After they were released from prison, there were several conventions where they made pronouncements or declarations, and many of these declarations were against the United States government. As witnesses, do not fear you, because God is with us. Your end has come. The divine judgment is written against you, and declaring your destruction, and you're going to die. And the memory of you shall perish forever. All honor loving Catholics, Jews, and Protestants, I address these words of hope. Heretofore, you have followed the lead of unrighteous men, permitting them to think for you. If seek religion and choose and serve God and Christ, his king, all who do not stand for God and his king but Christ, remain in opposition and will be destroyed. On January 30th, 1933, Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany. Soon thereafter, Rutherford's relentless push to sell books door to door, regardless of the safety of the Watchtower followers in Germany, led to a ban against them. It didn't take long for the Nazis to act. The first ban on the Watchtower was on April 10th, and their possessions were confiscated on the 24th. As we continued following the trail of evidence, we found that when the Nazis refused to restore the property, Rutherford appealed to the United States government, and they were able to get the property restored. The documented evidence shows that several more bans were made against the Watchtower Society up to June 24, 1933. One day after the final ban, the Society drafted a Declaration of Facts as a direct appeal to Hitler himself to restore their property on June 25th. This letter attempted to appeal to Hitler's hatred of the Jews by responding with similar anti-Semitic statements. These statements continued throughout their literature published over the next several years. Hitler's response came three days later, on June 28th, when the Nazi party confiscated the Watchtower properties again. Soon after, the Nazis took all of the Watchtower literature and burned it. Oh, that doesn't look good. In June, President Joseph Rutherford of the Society visited Germany to take some action to get the Society's property restored to our possession and to carry on the work further. Knowing that the enemy has misrepresented the facts to the government, a declaration of facts was prepared, and on the 25th day of June, more than 7,000 of Jehovah's Witnesses assembled at Berlin and unanimously adopted the resolution, millions of which were printed and distributed throughout Germany. That resolution is as follows, to wit. It is falsely charged by our enemies that we have received financial support for our work from the Jews. Nothing is further from the truth. Up to this hour, there never has been the slightest bit of money contributed to our work by Jews. The greatest and most oppressive empire on earth is the Anglo-American Empire. By this has meant the British Empire of which the United States of America forms a part. It has been the commercial Jews of the British American Empire that have built up and carried big business as a means of exploiting and oppressing the peoples of many nations. This fact particularly applies to the cities of London and New York, the stronghold of big business. This fact is so manifest in America that there is a proverb concerning the city of New York which says that Jews own it. The Irish Catholics rule it and the Americans pay the bills. 
We have no fight with any of these persons mentioned, but as witnesses for Jehovah and in obedience to his commandments set forth in the scriptures. We are compelled to call attention to the truth concerning the same, in order that the people may be enlightened concerning God and his purpose. The present government of Germany has declared emphatically against big business oppressors and in opposition to the wrongful religious influence in the political affairs of the nation. Such is exactly our position. Instead of being against the principles advocated by the government of Germany, we stand squarely for such principles and point out that Jehovah God through Christ Jesus will bring about the full realization of these principles. The people now on earth, and which are called Jews, our commercial people, among them are some of the richest and most avarice men the world has ever known. Some of the chief men of big business are called Jews. Many of these people are very arrogant, self-important, and extremely selfish. Amongst her instruments that she uses are ultra-selfish men called Jews, who look only for personal gain, and who therefore readily yield to and join with a hierarchy in any unrighteous scheme. But it's in this declaration of facts that Rutherford says, hey, we believe in Germany's principles, we believe in Germany's ideals, and we believe Jehovah's going to help you accomplish those ideals. We don't like the Jews either, by the way. Just leave us alone. That's summarizing the point. Except those who knew what literature the Watchtower was distributing, they knew they were distributing literature that was very in support of the Jews. At the time. At the time, before 1930 and 31, when that position changed. In this view, 1,000 years of the seventh day remain, during which Earth and her population will reach the grand perfection designed by the Creator. The completed creation will find our Earth a paradise and filled with a perfect and happy human family in harmony with the Creator. Thereafter, there shall be no more sin, sorrow, crying or dying. The curse of death will have been rolled away by the Redeemer, and the blessing of God will be upon all everlasting life. Whether Jews or Christians, Catholics or Protestants, we are surely impressed with the thought that God's dealings with his chosen people, Israel, were typical of wonderful things. Some of them to be fulfilled under Messiah's kingdom for which we all pray, thy kingdom come. After the church has been glorified, and the time comes for giving the knowledge of the truth to the world in general, it is God's order that this blessing also shall be to the Jew first. Hearken to the apostles' words, and then all Israel shall be saved from blindness, and thought comes from knowledge of the truth. So... All the German government knew about is what the stance had been decades previous and the very recent change they would not have been aware of. So Rutherford has to make it very, very clear of their new position. And so we're going to discuss this in depth in a, in a future discussion. He basically here is trying to make another compromise, and this time with Hitler. I, I remember reading that, and he didn't actually come out and say they hate them and to kill them. But at the same time, when you're telling them, hey, we don't associate them either, you might as well be condemning them. And there are people already on the chopping block. You you added more, see, even the Jehovah's Witnesses don't like you, fuel to the fire. There's some a whole lot of history surrounding this and a lot of documentation. Mm -hmm. And I have books on both sides of the Washtower side and, and uh, another side of the history for, by others. Uh, scholarly approaches. There's all sorts of different aspects that this can be looked at. And so we're putting that together, but it's a future discussion for another time. But again, this they didn't care about saying, hey, don't persecute the Jews, it's don't persecute us. Not Nothing about leave the Jews alone, 
leave us alone. It's all about us. Return our property. Leave us alone. Leave, you know, we'll, we'll go about our business. Just leave us alone. We don't like the Jews either, and we believe in your principles. That's not a re that's not a really good compromise to try and take. Not with especially what they with what, going on yeah, the it, exactly. Especially with what was happening. You, you don't again. You're adding fuel to a fire. Well, all it did is enrage Hitler even more. He tried a, a stance that they they continue to this day. He had the Watchtower subscribers, 30,000 of them send telegrams to Hitler. Just like Watchtower subscribers will be sending this to many nations and governments of the world saying, hey, you're, by the way, your government's going to be destroyed. It's a Rutherford era tactic that they keep using again and again. It's in 1939 that neutrality becomes an issue. So the witnesses in Germany and, and the other nations were undergoing severe persecution because of the Nazi regime. And the Allies declare war on Germany. You tried to compromise with Hitler. And so when war is declared, you have to come out with neutrality. The timing, again, is very, very suspicious for me. He didn't learn from his failure or compromise in World War I, and he tries to repeat it again in World War II. It's a very sad story. People died because of the position that he took. He's basically trying to cover his butt. Very good point made. Here's the letter with this compromise with Hitler. We are the faithful followers of Christ Jesus and believe upon him as the savior of the world, whereas the Jews entirely reject Jesus Christ and emphatically deny that he is the savior of the world, sent of God for man's good. This of itself should be sufficient proof to show that we receive no support from the Jews, and therefore the charges against us are maliciously false, and could proceed only from Satan, the great enemy. On September 12, 1933, the United States government was again successful in having Watchtower property restored. But the ban on the witnesses continued. Rutherford's contest with Hitler escalated. On February 9th, 1934, Rutherford switched and decided to write a threatening letter to Hitler demanding the persecution against the Jehovah's Witnesses stop or he would expose it. On October 7th, the German government was bombarded with thousands of telegrams from all over the world denouncing the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses. The Gestapo's response to these letters came in April 1935, when Watchtower officials were arrested. In the spring of 1936, a special unit was formed by the Gestapo to investigate and restrain the Jehovah's Witnesses. Months later, on October 14, 1936, mass arrests, imprisonments, and torture against the Jehovah's Witnesses began in earnest. On May 8, 1945, the Second World War ended and the surviving Jews, Jehovah's Witnesses, Bible students, and other prisoners were freed. The Watchtower response to the predicament of the Jews is appalling. In 1946, just one year after the war, the Watchtower published a book called Let God Be True. In this book, the scriptural promise to the Jewish people to be restored to their homeland is denied. The facts and prophecies prove that the natural Jews will never again be a chosen, regathered people. They have, as a people, flagrantly rejected the Messiah, the truth, and his kingdom. It is a falsehood that they must be regathered to Palestine and be converted in mass to Jesus Christ prior to his second coming, and as a sign of the early establishment of his kingdom. 
God's kingdom was established A.D. 1914. And then Christ Jesus came into kingdom power at his Father's right hand. And this without any mass conversion of natural Jews to Christ. After Israel became a nation two years later, in 1948, a second edition of the book was published, removing these false prophecies about Israel. Both groups, the Jews and the Jehovah's Witnesses, had just been freed from the persecution by the Nazi regime. Instead of sympathizing with the similar plight, the Jehovah's Witness response was repulsive. Many Jews had died a horrific death by the hands of the Nazi party, yet this book labeled them as Satan's followers, who would soon die a horrific death in Armageddon as a judgment of God. Instead of blaming the Nazis for the Jewish maltreatment, instead of a message of comfort, they blamed the Jews themselves. Much of their suffering has been brought upon themselves by their commercial rebellious course of action. They will ever be a target of assault by Satan and his agents until Armageddon cleanses the earth of all opposers of Messiah Christ. Therefore, their only hope is to accept Jehovah's Messiah Christ Jesus and come under the protection of his kingdom. To this day, the Jehovah's Witnesses claim that they stood firm against the Nazis from the very beginning. However, as we have seen, the attempted compromise with Hitler and the several anti-Semitic statements which followed demonstrate otherwise. The Jehovah's Witnesses also claim that because they were persecuted, it proves that they are God's organization, while at the same time, they dismiss persecution against other faiths. This is true of the experiences of Christians in various denominations then and later during communist rule in Eastern Europe where a similar situation happened. So we talked about the letter, now we're showing the letter. Now that we've shown you the letter and actually are reading the letter, now we can say more definitively, look, that, that's, that's, he was almost blessing the persecution of the Jews. They, they rejected. They did, the, 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 go ahead. You know, that, that, that was a little, that's not neutral, even toward, <laughs> toward that aspect of things, let alone the war. Um, so he, here we took it in, in stages to show what, what actually transponded during that time. That's not pretty. And, and it resulted very unfortunately in, in deaths, as we said. Very sad. In America, Canada, and other parts of the British Empire, the political clergy priests, and Jesuits have persistently persecuted and continue to persecute those of our organization. And that without just cause or excuse. And we have every reason to believe that a like influence has been subtly employed by the great enemy Satan to misrepresent us and our work. He's trying to appease to Hitler's very patriotic German stance, right? We're, we're patriotic in Germany, too, and look how the people of Germany have suffered because of the church. We're not involved in any of that, of course. We remind you that in the years past, the political clergymen have brought more sorrow upon the German people than probably any other class of men. Instead of being against the principles advocated by the government of Germany, we stand squarely for such principles and point out that Jehovah God through Christ Jesus will bring about the full realization of these principles 
and will give to the people peace and prosperity and the greatest desire of every honest heart. Now, knowing what was going on to to make that statement, that, that's quite drastic and hypocritical. Um, no, knowing, I, I mean, it's just mind boggling how how they were how they took that stand and squarely <laughs> yeah you know they're advocating hitler there's no way around that it was not a neutral stance and that i think is the point that is the point why we're bringing this it's not a neutral stance here again remember rutherford's stance on the league of nations and how he praised the league of nations and praised president wilson again and not a neutral stance here he says it was the league of nations compact that laid upon the shoulders of the German people the great, unjust, and unbearable burdens. That League of Nations compact was not brought forth by the friends in Germany. So you're making it sound like you didn't like the League of Nations, but you praised them when they first came out. You didn't have a neutral stance then, but now you do? For me, it just boggles and blows my mind how you can just a decade later say, this is a stance we took in World War One when it's the exact opposite stance that you took, right? Mm-hmm. So you're rewriting history very soon out of the gate. And you're using that to prove, hey, we were very bold there and we stood for principles, but you didn't stand for principles. You compromised your principles. That doesn't prove anything. And people fell for it. That that's very that that see that's aspect. what that's what gets me, Jeff. Is they fall for it? I mean, here it is, contrary to what evidence and documentation say, and they act like it it never happened. And no, they said it, and it, so they just they just follow. And if and, you questioned it, what happened to you? You're yeah. shunned. You're ostracized. Right, you're removed. You're an apostate. So you couldn't even go back and say, well, look, in this watchtower, this is what you said. You're removed before you woke anyone else up. Yeah. Very, very sad. Such dictatorial control that originated within that Rutherford movement. And it hasn't improved over time. And well said, Jeff, a Rutherford movement, because really the the. Jehovah's Witnesses were not the Bible students. Uh, that, that's like saying how the Jehovah's Witnesses are Bible students is like saying you, you took over a restaurant building and you're the same restaurant that the family who owned it was before. Yet you change all the food and then, and then advertise the same restaurant. It's not the same. You, you, you took over a building or a printing press, you took over the printing presses and published new, new food, new material. So it's, it's not the same organization. Bait and switch, right? <laughs> Isn't that what they call that? No. And, and I had a, I've had a couple of Jehovah's Witness friends, uh, one I'm having a study with uh, now, who's still in the organization, and then one just left basically a month ago. And they told me that as much as this message has been getting simpled down and simpled down and made more and more simple so that even children can understand it, that there's no substance anymore. It's milk, not even milk, it's water. And so they're spiritually starving. They're just not getting any meat, not getting anything of substance to keep them going. And it's because they're trying to appeal to everybody, give something to everybody. And they're losing those, and they're losing the very foundation. They claim to be a spiritual oasis, but they're really a spiritual desert. And so the truth is drying up. There's just nothing there anymore that a lot of these people can grab on and hold on to. And some people, on the other side, some people are very hesitant. You know, how do I know I'm right or not? Well, if somebody tells you what to believe, it's much more comfortable for them to be told what to believe than to think for themselves, right? Then, then there's no doubt or hesitation because they said they're their chosen ones. They got to be. And their history proves it. Even though 
they're not always telling the truth about the history, as we've seen in this neutrality discussion. They've changed even opposite, took an opposite take of what really happened. Now, in, in the Jehovah Witness defense, um, at least they're teaching the Bible. At least they're teaching something. Okay, you'll live in paradise. Okay, you do this. And I give them credit. Okay, they are not promoting immorality and all kinds of other things that the Bible doesn't, that the Bible condemns. So they're at least doing that. However, are you preaching the gospel of Christ and are you being completely honest about it and in, in the history itself? So that's where, where the questions come up. There's some praise that you can give to them. But there's also a lot of, of, of criticism you could apply to, because what is it? How many millions have left that are that are just right, right. you know, all over the Internet? They all can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you claim to be neutral. And we're seeing from the history that they haven't always followed that neutral stance. What does your history say? Well, let's look at one more yearbook, this time the 1983 yearbook, to see how this claimed neutrality stance against participation in war was carried about by the Jehovah's Witnesses.